I'm inside our old school bus here and we have a rolling log mouse trap and you can see there's one mouse there and another mouse there and what happens is they come across from here and they step on this and it spins them and down they go there's the peanut butter that you put on there and they fall down into the bucket and meet their feet and you have to do that when you're out in the countryside because if you don't they will destroy pretty much everything that they can get into vehicles and if they get into your cabin or whatever else they'll destroy it completely so just wanted to show people that you can get these things i think on ebay these rolling log mouse traps drill a hole through a five gallon bucket a little bit of water in the bottom a little bit of peanut butter and you can kill multiple mice much better than just your standard uh mouse trap so you can see behind me here our old school bus with the firewood in it good place to keep your firewood it keeps it nice and dry and uh, also works as sort of a solar kiln throughout the summer months. Um, you get the heat in there and it really keeps the, really dries it out good, makes it nice and dry. So, and of course the uh, plow truck here. And um, yeah, so uh, haven't gotten the battery yet for that. I'm meaning to do that, but just haven't had the time to get around to buying the battery. So um, just wanted to make a video here uh, talking about something which I did not cover in my one study and uh, I'm thankful for people that come along and they offer arguments against what I preach because it helps me to um, be on my toes and just make sure I'm answering every man and uh, I re realize I make a lot of enemies because I tell the truth and I am you know as Paul wrote he said am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth well that is what happens with most people but uh, I want to cover this thing of, of uh, for 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 6 where it talks about being un unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And people say, oh, the only, I've seen this thing in the comments, the only standard in the New Testament for marriage is that you're not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Beautiful dark purple leaves here. I think it's called Virginia creeper. That plant, it's kind of a, a vine type of thing, but... Getting back to the subject here, the only standard is you're not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Well, uh, in terms of instruction and righteousness, that is true. Definitely, I will not say it's a lie or anything else. It is true. You should make sure that you're married to somebody who's saved. But 1 Corinthians chapter 7 gives you instructions about how what to do if you're married to somebody that is lost. If you're pleased to dwell with them and if they're if you're getting along you're not supposed to leave them so to say that uh, you there's a rule in the new testament that says you have to be married to somebody who's saved and then you apply second corinthians chapter 6 to it uh, that's not true you have a major doctrinal error there um, you have to be careful what you come up with you see when a man is called into ministry god doesn't just say okay you got saved you ready to preach go preach it doesn't work that way God has a system of uh, learning and education that has to be there. And there's no Bible college education in the scriptures. You have to understand that because that produces a lot of times the wrong thing because you have the Bible college, if they're teaching the wrong doctrines, if they're teaching the wrong um, beliefs towards the scriptures, the inspiration of scripture, then all you're doing is you, you can't graduate from that Bible college until you admit to their wrong doctrines. You admit to their wrong doctrines and now you come out and you get your degree and everything else. Um, that's a problem. Shouldn't be that way. Um, there, the Bible talks about there being heresies that they may, that they are, that are approved can be made manifest. Again, paraphrasing there. But the whole point is there are men that can go through Bible college, they can come out with a PhD and they can speak heresy because the Bible college itself was corrupt. So when I say education, you have to understand what God's system of education is. God will put you through the school of hard knocks. God will allow you to get beat up and, and uh, sometimes literally. God will allow bad things to happen in your life. You'll go through a lot and that's the Lord training you. He'll teach you those things. You have a secular job, you'll learn how do lost people attack the word of God. You'll be dealing with them face to face. I went through all of that stuff for many years, um, dealing with Catholics that I worked with, dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses, dealing with just atheists, dealing with 
all sorts of people and you work with them day in and day out and you hear their profanity and you hear their filthy jokes and whatever else and you go through it another beautiful maple tree there and that's what the way it is you're learning you're being taught and then when you you know a lot of that stuff will be even when you're lost many times the lord will watch how you handle that stuff um, you might be a false professing christian like i was and so i would stand up for the word of god even though i didn't really understand what i was saying and i would stand up for the lord and there are many times that lost people just put me in my place and i had no answer for them and it was just kind of <laughs> that's why i don't believe in your god ha 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 you know well wait till i get saved and then come back but um so that's one part of education the other part of education is god will make you live the king james bible he will uh, put you through experiences where you'll be able to relate to the scriptures. You'll say, Paul had this happen to him. Jesus had this happen to him. People were, you know, mocking him and putting him down. And you know, his disciples, well, Judas Iscariot, I'll say it that way, turned against Jesus. And you'll get that. You'll go through that. That's all part of the Lord putting you through things. So there is no such thing as somebody that gets saved and instantly they just write into ministry and, and they're on a high level and you, you know, you can trust every word that they say. No, it takes years. It takes years of learning. It takes years of study. You say, what about the Apostle Paul? It kind of looked like he was there and on the road to Damascus and he is struck with blindness by the Lord. And he goes and he's there and, and uh, I always forget the guy's name. I don't know why I can't remember that. But the guy comes to him and he says, you know, brother Saul, receive thy sight. You know, and he scales fall off of his eyes and he can see and he goes out and he starts to preach uh you say well, what about that see saul later called paul he's an example where you're wrong brian you're wrong you're wrong you're just as wrong as you could be uh, well remember that saul was actually brought up at the feet of gamaliel he was trained in all the things about the law and everything else he was a very highly educated uh young man so a little bit different situation uh, if you're brought up in church buildings and whatever else and you know all the stories and know all the right things to do and whatever as a Christian, well, you're in a different situation than somebody just off the street. So the Lord, Lord might be able to call you into ministry sooner if you don't have a pride problem where you just say, oh, I won't back down from what I was always taught. You have to question what you were always taught. So what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of new professing Christians and they think that they have a right to just come along and say, well, uh, you know, Dunninger, you're dumb, you don't understand this argument here. Um, well, actually, yes, I do. I do understand all the arguments because I thoroughly studied it years ago. A lot of the things I've studied, I've uh, studied them extensively from all sides 10, 12, 15 years ago. Um, people don't understand that. They just think that they can, you know, come around and, and shove me around. Oh, he's never heard this argument before. Oh, no, I have. I have heard the arguments, believe you me. And, uh, the, you know, the resurrection, the timing of the resurrection of the body of Christ. I know all the arguments. I've studied it. I've, you know, hunted for post-trib people and, you know, online and listened to everything that they would speak. Back before I got married, I was spending, you know, just all day, every day, studying all sides of an argument. Um, I mean, again, my library, I have a lot of heretical books in my library. I have you know more books in my library than more catholic books in my library than most catholic priests do probably uh, i've studied because i wanted to be used of the lord i didn't know what capacity and then he called me into the ministry counted me faithful and he said okay i'm going to put you into the ministry then you're still going to be learning and i'm still learning by the way and it's not ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth no you will understand the truth um and you'll see uh, a lot of times the Lord will allow you to see an argument against the truth and you don't have an answer for it. And you kind of think it might shake your faith a little on you. And you kind of say, I don't know what to say to that. Um, uh, uh, you know, and you start to kind of doubt a little bit. But then you have to reverse back and say, okay, you're not to be established with meat, but rather with milk. If the King James Bible is not God's word, then where is it? And you go... Yeah, okay, you know. Well, what about the fact that the manuscripts support the King James Bible? What about the fact that, you know, all the things that you've learned about the King James Bible and whatever? Yeah, all right. Yeah, and you kind of backtrack and you say, okay, 
King James Bible is the Word of God, then this issue that I hear about it, I'll have to do some research into that. And you might get somebody that tries to put you on the spot. Answer me right now. Well, I can't. Well, then that proves it's wrong. No, it proves I don't know how to answer you right now. I'll get you the answer. But uh, reverse it on them then. See? And just simply say, okay, if what you're saying is true, in your mind you feel that this is true, then where does that leave you as a Christian? You know, or whatever. Or as an atheist. What about your system of evolution? If my God, the God of the Bible, is such an evil misogynistic, racist, bigoted, homophobic, you know, all the names they come up with, with for God, you just simply say, how about evolution? How about the process that, uh, you know, teaches that death is the means of getting ahead? How about that? Pull the spider web off here. <laughs> you know, there's always ways that you can fight through this stuff. But getting back to the topic here of this video, this thing of being unequally yoked together with unbelievers, that's the only standard in Scripture. That's not true. And if you actually read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, where it's talking about being not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship? It's about fellowship. And it says about sons and daughters later on in the passage. Um, I don't think that you're getting married to uh, multiple wives or multiple husbands. What's it talking about? It's talking about the body of Christ fellowshipping with lost people getting together with lost people, which actually condemns all church buildings because church buildings are open to the public. And the public, the lost people, are regularly invited to the church through fellowship suppers or through revival meetings or whatever else, thereby violating the scriptures. Um, so, and it, you know, again, you can get into all the arguments there. Well, what about in 1 Corinthians chapter 14? It talks about if an unbeliever comes in, they're speaking in tongues. It says if, first of all. Secondly, it's talking about a public gathering in that passage. It's not talking about some church building where you have uh, lost people are invited, all are welcome or something. It's not talking about that. Again, I've gone through all of this stuff. Well, you need to you know, re repeat it in all the studies that you do or something. I can't. Uh, the Bible, you know, sound Bible doctrine is very complicated incredibly complicated yes there are the basics of scripture that you can understand as a babe in christ and that's all you really need to know at that point in time but as you grow in the lord the lord will start to reveal more things to you that's how it works all right um but be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers brothers see it's just about saved versus lost and that's all it ever was it was just any time that there's condemnation about uh you know marriages that were bad or something in the bible it's always just about pagan ver worship versus people that worship god um if you believe that then you are a fool uh you are a fool i can tell you that you are ignorant of the scriptures you don't know what you're talking about and again go through all the scriptures on interracial marriage well i already have in other studies i've gone through it all showing that there's a an issue about seed okay uh the seed there Referring to the children of Israel. Um, it's not talking about spiritual things. It's talking about seed, physical seed. Um, but if you go to the book of Galatians, I'll give you a New Testament example. Because you say, well, it's all Old Testament. They're dealing with the nation there. There was some national boundary stuff. Whatever else, you know. We'll uh, go with that for a minute. Okay. But you say it's not in the New Testament. Oh, uh, yes, it is. Um, because if you go to Galatians chapter 4... It talks about that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman and the other by a free woman. Um, why would there be a difference between the two? And it says about the one is Agar, New Testament word for Hagar in the Old Testament, Greek coming to English versus Hebrew coming to English in the Old Testament. But the one is Agar from Arabia. It gives her race. It doesn't say that she's uh, Jewish of the you know seed of abraham there uh no she's of a different race and her race is listed in the new testament so if god doesn't care if god doesn't see any difference between the different races um then he why would he write and inspire there in the new testament that agar is from arabia doesn't make a whole lot of sense now does it um but i'd like to make another point here about this whole thing of it's un just unequal yoking. That's the only thing that's forbidden in Scripture. Okay, by that line of reasoning, 
You say, as long as it's a saved man and a saved woman, it doesn't matter what the race is. Well, then let me ask you a question. What if it's a saved man and a saved man? They're not unequally yoked spiritually. You say, oh, come on. So of course, sodomy's wrong, you know. Homosexual marriages are forbidden in Scripture and everything else. Um, but why would they be wrong and interracial marriage okay? When the interracial marriage people themselves literally said that the first plank of getting sexual perversion uh, okayed was to get rid of the anti-miscegenation laws. I have the video to prove it. Mrs. Loving of the infamous Loving versus Virginia case, the black wife of the white man, uh, whatever his name Loving was, um, they were kicked out of Virginia back in the 1960s, early 1960s. Um, but the case went to the Supreme Court in 1962 by two Jewish lawyers that were trained Jesuits. And uh, I can't think of the names right now. Cohen and Bernard Cohen and um, uh, I can't think of the, the other guy. But um, Hirsch Koffer, I, I forget what the name was. But the whole point is two Jewish lawyers uh, that are trained by the Jesuits. Jesuit Jews. Hmm. And they overthrew the anti-miscegenation laws. And Mrs. Loving said years later in an interview, she said about how that that was what we needed to do to pave the way for getting rid of anti-sodomy laws. So the very people that were involved in getting rid of the anti-miscegenation laws, anti-miscegenation just meaning you're not allowed to miscegenate, you're not allowed to, to race mix. That was the rules here in America, laws in America, but I guess that was intolerant racist bigots that came out with that stuff. Yeah. Um, wasn't Christians or anything that came out and said we don't want to have race mixing and ruin our nation here. A nation with unique diverse groups of people respecting one another's ethnicities. No, no, we need to blend everything together like the Tower of Babel. I mean, you can't argue with this stuff. I don't understand how people can just completely ignore what the scriptures teach. But that's what sinners do. But again, a historical proven fact. Got rid of the anti-miscegenation laws so that the anti-sodomy laws could be taken down next. That's how they did it. So if you don't, if you want to use the uh, unequally yoked thing, well then, hey, what's to stop uh, two Christian men from getting married if they want to? Well, because sodomy is spoken against and whatever, and interracial marriage isn't. Okay. You see, but what, what about all the people that were interracially married in the Bible? Again, I've answered that in other studies, but I'll say it one more time. Um, God is accepting of sinners. God saves sinners. Um, and that's all that there is to that. And there are certain times when God allowed interracial marriage to happen in the Old Testament. It happened not because it was his, you know, perfect will or anything. It just, it happens. And the Lord uses it as a type of showing that one day the bride of Christ would be Gentile and Jesus Christ would be Jewish. You say, well, see right there is interracial marriage. Had somebody put that in the comments. It's interracial marriage. See, so you're against what Jesus is doing. Okay, Jesus is not physically marrying the Gentile bride. All right, there's no children that get produced or anything else. It's purely symbolic, obviously. I don't think Jesus is going to get married to, you know, right around a little less than 200 million Christians or something. Uh, no, that's not how it's going to happen. So, again, if you, if you want to make this thing into I'm hating people and whatever else, well, that's your problem. Quite frankly, I have no, no, uh, nothing else I can really say to you if that's the way that you're going to be about this and, and attack me and put me down and say I'm a racist and a bigot and whatever. You know, okay. Um, you can't deny what the scriptures teach. And if you do, um, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, about how that the Bible, when you receive it, you receive it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. The doors of revelation will stay open to you where God will reveal himself to you until the time when you call him a liar. And as soon as you call God a liar, as soon as you stop believing in his word, he will slam the door of revelation shut in your face. And I don't mean the book of revelation, although that's there too. I mean the book of revealing the scriptures to you. 
Uh, it's a very serious thing when you do that. So, um, so why are you making these videos, Brian? Why, why are you stirring up trouble? Um, I'm not stirring up trouble. I'm teaching what the Bible teaches. And uh, the trouble comes from people that get angry at the video. You just move along. I'm getting people threatening me and all kinds of stuff. You better stop this. You better stop it or else. Or else what? I've proved my case. I have proved what I've said. And God knows my heart. I don't hate anybody. I don't. But uh, I've turned young people away before from interracial marriages. And you know what? Uh, shocker coming here. God stopped me from two interracial marriages that I was involved in. Uh, relationships that could have turned into marriage. Let me say it that way to be more accurate. Um, I dated two different uh, girls that were not white. Um, both were Latina, you know, if you call it that. One from Honduras, one from Costa Rica. And uh, I was very much in lust with them. And I wanted to marry both of them. And uh, the Lord made things happen and just slammed the brakes on and said no. Now, if uh, God was all for interracial marriage, and it was the Lord's doing, by the way. It wasn't my doing. I wanted very badly to marry them. And if he was for interracial marriage, why did he stop me? You say, well, because you're saved. Actually, no, I was lost at the time. Hmm. God could see out into my future where I couldn't see. And God said, no. No, uh, son, I don't want you messing around with them. That's uh, what, my, what the word calls strange flesh. I don't want you doing that. I have plans for you, and I thank the Lord for that, and that's why I try to work as hard as I can, because I'm so deeply in debt to the Lord. I'm not in debt to any man, owe no man anything. Uh, I believe that. I take that seriously. It's uh, not easy to live that, that way, especially in this economy, but uh, I take it serious. I really do, but to the Lord, oh boy. <laughs> 33 trillion in debt is mild compared to how I'm in debt to the Lord. Uh, I owe him a lot. And so, you know, you come along and you say, well, Denlinger, you're, you're dumb, you're stupid, you're... Okay. Either stop, don't watch the video that I'm talking about interracial stuff, or just run along. You know, go someplace else. That's how it works. But um, I need to warn young people. If you're out there and you're in some kind of an interracial relationship... You better get that sorted out and just say, no, I'm not doing this. Uh, don't ram that through. I've seen a lot of interracial marriages, interracial relationships, and they end, uh, end up very miserably and end up very bad. And somebody will say, well, I know I'm in one and it's wonderful. It's great. And, okay. There's always somebody like that. <laughs> so, but, uh, I will be coming out with another video or two on the issue. It's one of the things I take stands against because it's one of the things, you know, I'm supposed to hinder the Antichrist system. The Antichrist system cannot come in uh, without the distinctions in people's ethnicity being removed. We have to get rid of all that stuff. We have to come together. It's all one world. We can't have nations with national sovereignty and closed borders and, and law, you know? Rule of law has to be done away with so we can rewrite the rule of law and bring in our new world order. No, no. Um, I'm going to fight that. Well, you can't stop it, um, obviously, but I'm supposed to hinder it. And I will hinder it. Um, I will fight against it. And I thank the Lord when I hear from young people and they say, Hey, brother, I was involved in a sinful relationship, interracial relationship, and uh, broke it off. We didn't get married. I thank the Lord I didn't go through with that. So, that's what I'm doing. Um, there is seed there. And I'll be coming out with a study in the future, a detailed study on the thing of the holy seed and how it was mingled. And um, why the Jews have mingled their seed. Why would two Jewish lawyers want to overthrow anti-miscegenation laws in this country? Why would they want to do that? Is there a reason for it? I mean, Jesuit trained. Georgetown University, forget what the, where the other guy went, but Georgetown University, the biggest Jesuit school in America, training two Jewish men, and they come out and they make it a big, their, their purpose in life 
to get rid of the anti-miscegenation laws here in America. And boy, I mean, hey, you know, you can tell though that things got better since 1962. Boy, I'll tell you what, you know, America has sure improved since those Jesuits got rid of the anti-miscegenation laws. Boy, look at the blessing of God from 1962 till now. No, actually things fell off a cliff. Things have gotten much worse since 1962. Um, and the anti-miscegenation laws are a very big part of that. Because now all of a sudden uh, sex perversion and, and deviancy is more accepted now. But uh, they had to get rid of the stigma of interracial marriage being wrong and whatever. And, you know, uh, we, we have to get rid of that. And now that we've gotten rid of that and we're done with our prejudices and all this other stuff, now we're okay with it. And, and um, now we can start to go to the next thing. Getting rid of the stuff against sodomy. Um, you know, now they're coming out with more and more things and they'll have, you know, the sodomites and, and, um, we're just supposed to be okay with this. Now they can go after the children and, and, uh, do surgical procedures on children. Totally satanic. But how did it get started? It got started with overthrowing the anti-miscegenation laws. Historical fact. You better be careful what you're standing for. Because you will answer to God for it. So, uh, are there, what are the standards for the New Testament Christian? Well, um, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it talks about that uh, it's better to stay single as a Christian, but if you cannot contain, then you're to marry, because it's better to marry than to burn. So if you have lust issues, then you should start looking to get married. And you should, of course, look for somebody that's saved. What do you do with some two people that are lost and all of a sudden one of them gets saved? Do you just divorce because your husband or wife is lost? No, you don't do that. Um, you pray for them if you're okay living together as husband and wife and he or she lets you worship the Lord freely, then stay together. That's New Testament. Not, uh, well, unequally yoked, then you need to, you know, you're in an unequally yoked marriage or something like this. That's Roman Catholic. The Roman Catholic Church teaches that if you're in an unequal, unequally yoked marriage, then you have to disannul it. You have to break up and leave that person. Good example of that is uh, Mel Gibson, the movie star. I remember he's a trad cat and a traditional Catholic, in other words. And his wife was a Protestant, and he left her. Had a whole bunch of children and everything, just left them. He didn't do anything wrong according to Catholicism. But uh, that's what you get when you make this unequally yoked thing. Just this, this has to be in marriage or whatever. Um, that's not what the New Testament teaches. It isn't. Instruction in righteousness, yes. You want to get married to somebody that's saved, absolutely. But to say it's some kind of a, this, this is the rule. There cannot be any saved and lost people married in the body of Christ. You don't know the scriptures. Uh, again, don't come up with arguments against me if you just newly got saved. Sit there and listen. The Bible says about the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. How does, how does doctrine become sound? Uh, it has to be ironed out. It has to be preached and taught and worked out talking with people in person and everything. That takes years. That's why you listen to an older man of God that knows the Bible, that has spent time studying the scriptures. But some of you punks out there, oh man, you're just so smart. You know more than Brother Brian and whatever else. Well, we'll see about that. Um, because I've seen it time and time again. Some of the little smarties out there that like to push me around and boss me around. They end up amounting to nothing. They fall apart. Go back to the world. I was part of the Denlinger cult. Now I'm back to the world again. It's wonderful. Go ahead. Go on back. Uh, so the standards of Scripture. Um, the standards of Scripture are such that while it is advised to marry somebody that is born again, um, it's not required. Okay, you say, well, where does it say that, you know, thou shalt, I saw another thing in the comments, some of you brilliant people. Um, where does the Bible say thou shalt not marry interracially? Well, you see, when you use an argument like that, the problem is I can flip it right back on you and say, where does the Bible say thou shalt marry interracially? It doesn't say either one. 
right? But you look at the totality of Scripture and you say, you know what? I think the Lord wants us to stay in the bounds of our habitation. I don't think He wants us leaving the bounds of our habitation. So I probably should just stick with somebody that's like me. Um, you know, again, I knew a, a guy years ago, and uh, he was Indian from India, married a white woman. She moved over there to India. I bet you they have problems. I bet you they're not accepted by the people of India. And why should they be? He couldn't marry one of those beautiful Indian women over there. Beautiful Indian girl. What a shame. So that is going to be it. More sermons coming. I'm not trying to stir up strife or anything else. I'm just trying to preach the Bible and I'll stand by the scriptures. That'll be it. Thank you for watching. Just in case you're wondering, how do I get those mice out of that bucket there? Answer is very simple. This little thing here, handheld, you squeeze this and it closes that. So you just go down here, play fishing for mice. Oops, didn't get it. Pull the dead mouse out. And then you use this little flipper thing here to here, take it out and you flip it outside. So, not too bad.